Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for this evening is the Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 40. Please feel free to grab a Bible from the pew rack in front of you or turn to the reading in your bulletin. Well, I want you to imagine with me for a moment a world that has turned its back on God. A world where people no longer listen to what God has told them. A world where everyone thinks they can do whatever they want. And so they turn away from God and fail to follow his commands and his word. It's probably not all that difficult of a thing for you to do if you just spend a minute or two thinking about it. It's easy for us to imagine because all too often that's the kind of thing that we're surrounded by in this world. We live in a world that has turned its back on God, not necessarily even on purpose, but through our sins we have turned away from God. That's the kind of world that the prophet Isaiah spoke about. That is what he said was going to happen, and, and sure enough, Isaiah was right. That is how they used to test the prophets. If they said something and, they, and it came true, then they knew they were a prophet. So Isaiah, after his death, was known for sure to be a prophet because his prophecies came true. And sure enough, Isaiah prophesied that Jerusalem would be overthrown. He said that God's judgment would come down on the people of Jerusalem at the hands of the Babylonians, and around a hundred or so years after the death of Isaiah, the Babylonians did overthrow Jerusalem. Not only did they overthrow it, but they put into motion things like herbicide, where they destroyed the city's architecture, and ecocide, where they even wiped out the environment surrounding Jerusalem. And if you were an Israelite who lived in Judah at this time, you would probably have looked around and thought to yourself that Nebuchadnezzar's false gods had triumphed over the God of Israel. Or maybe, maybe you thought that God had chosen not to defend his people. Or worse yet, maybe you thought that God didn't even exist at all. That's the kind of despair the people of Judah probably went through when these prophecies of Isaiah came true. When, when Babylon took over and they were taken into captivity, when, when the people of Israel were oppressed by foreign leaders who had come to take over their land. That's how we can feel sometimes as we walk through this life, as we live our lives in this culture that we're a part of today. This culture that has turned its back on God and His promises. This culture that laughs in the face of Christianity and tells us that we're doing nothing more than worshiping a figment of our own imagination. It can lead us to question ourselves. It can lead us to question our faith. It can lead us to wonder if this God that we worship, this God that we follow and call our God, is really even there sometimes. My friends, that's where our reading for today brings us hope and joy, and in times of difficulty and struggle, it brings us comfort. Isaiah opens this reading with the words, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Isaiah is telling the people of Israel that yes, bad things are going to happen. The Babylonians are going to take you into captivity. You're not going to be able to worship freely. You're going to be punished for your sins and indiscretions. But here Isaiah tells them that that's not the end of the story. They're not going to be abandoned forever. Babylon is not going to rule over them forever. There is hope for them still. Even when the situation seems completely hopeless, God is promising comfort to them through the words of Isaiah. Israel was down. It looked like they were going to be out of it. It looked like there was no hope left for them at all. It was like one of those old Rocky movies with Sylvester Stallone. You guys know what I'm talking about. He's getting beat by his opponent, but all of a sudden he gets his second wind and he comes out swinging. The difference between those two is that it wasn't Israel who did anything, it was God. It was all God's work for them. He provided them with the hope and the comfort that they needed. He came back to them as they were hurt and struggling the worst and he gave them hope. He brought them out of their darkness and into his marvelous light. My friends, that is the same comfort that God gives to us. As we walk through our lives in this world, as we deal with a culture that is falling farther and farther away from God, as we live our lives in the, as Christians in a world that is increasingly hostile to this message that we've been given to share, as all those things happen, we have God coming to us and bringing his comfort with him. In Isaiah, God spoke his comfort to his people through the words of the prophet Isaiah, 
today we've seen the hope of God. We've seen the Christ child lying in the manger with the angels singing praises. We've seen the humble birth of Christ. We have seen the joy that it brought to the people who saw him that night. We've seen the rest of the story as well. We've seen the work of Jesus throughout his life. We've seen the miracles, the healing of the sick, the raising of the dead, the gospel preached to all people. We've seen those things. We've seen the Savior hanging on the cross, and we've looked into the empty tomb, and we've seen the burial clothes lying there in the tomb, standing empty. God promised comfort to his people through the words of Isaiah. And as we draw closer to Christmas, we remember those words, and we remember the things that we have seen. We remember that we have seen the promises of God coming true through the baby that Mary laid in the manger. My friends, that's where we find our comfort, through the fulfilled promises of God, through the work of our Savior for us. It doesn't matter what else is happening around us. We know, as Isaiah, as Isaiah says at the end of our reading, that the Word of God will stand forever. And we know, that because, we know that because we have seen the Word made flesh in Jesus Christ. And so as we prepare to close out this season of Advent and celebrate Christmas next week, I pray that you would continue to find your hope and comfort in Jesus. Continue to hold your faith in the promises that God that have been fulfilled by God and continue to boldly share your faith with those around you. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all of our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand with me. We confess our Christian faith through the words of the apostles.